Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We're excited to welcome Dr. Anthony Manito as our speaker today, as he will provide some best practices of CAD CAM crown and bridge design using the PlanMecca Fit CAD CAM system. Before we get started, we've got a few reminders. At any point during the webinar, if you have questions, please type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end of the webinar. Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand, and this webinar is sponsored by Plan Mecca. With that, Dr. Manito, welcome and take it away. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate everyone out there for joining me. I know you are all uh, hard at work today, uh, seeing patients and saving teeth, so I appreciate you taking a little bit more time, uh, adding a little bit more time to your work day to to sit with me for an hour, and I hope it will be an hour well spent. Um, so just to give you a little background about myself, uh, I do teach at the Medical University of South Carolina. We have some um, CAD CAM clinics there, some digital clinics that I teach in. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but I also have a private practice that I work in a couple of days a week called Expertise Dental here in Charleston. Um, and in that practice, I actually have a uh, Plan Mecca Fit system. So uh, really excited to talk to you today about it and hopefully give you some tips and tricks and maybe um, give you a little more information about the system in general. So let's get rolling. We only have an hour. It's going to go fast. Um, so yeah, at, the, at MUSC, I am the, the division director for digital dentistry. I kind of oversee all the undergraduate um, digital clinics that we have and all the, the many pieces of technology. And we do have a lot of technology. We're super lucky. Uh, I, MUSC is like Disneyland for digital nerds. Uh, we have basically every, uh, almost every piece of imaginable uh, digital equipment that you can think of. Um, we've been very fortunate. We have a great team. Um, and so it's really a, a, a neat situation to be in because I get to not only play with Plan Mecca Fit system, but also basically every other CAD CAM system that's out there, every scanner. Uh, we have mil chair side mills, we have puck mills, we have lab scanners, we have all these things um, that I get to test out and try. And that has led to several pu publications and research projects over the years that I've been lucky enough to be associated with. So when I talk about Plan Mega Fit system today, I'm not, I'm talking, I'm speaking as someone who every day not only uses that system, but also uses a CEREC system, always also uses a three shape system. I've used the program mill one. Um, I have a, a lot of experience in CAD CAM dentistry in general um, and am very proficient with all those systems. So inevitably there are comparisons made between Planmeca system and the CEREC and, and whatever systems might also be out there. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but for the most part, I, I really wanna highlight this system and, and the advantages that it has over the others. So let's start with the basics. What is the workflow uh, that she can expect? And it's the same basically a, a, among all CAD CAM systems. First thing you need is intraoral scanning, right? You need data input, basically. You need to digitize the patient's uh, dentition. Um, and, and in this case, we are using the Emerald S scanner. And Emerald S scanner, I'm going to go into more detail about this later, uh, but it's actually, I think, an underrated scanner on the market. Uh, especially for the cost. Uh, it is very lightweight. It's easy to manipulate. It's easy to scan with. It's a very nice scanner, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, once we've accomplished that, we're going to go into margin marking and digital design. Um, and the software tools in the uh, software are uh, give you several different ways to, to accomplish this. Um, there, there are simple one-button one solutions, and there are more complex ways for uh, users as myself who maybe want a little bit more control doing certain tasks. Um, and then we're going to off, once we design that, we're off to milling. Um, and the, the 30S mill is a, I call it pinky. I have a, I have a couple of these that I have access to in the university and in my private practice. Uh, and this is a dynamite mill, y'all. Uh, it is a single spindle mill and it is extremely reliable. And I think that is something that people don't necessarily talk about. Um, when you hit the mill button, you expect to have a product in 10 minutes at least, right? Um, and, and when that doesn't happen, when you get an error that pops up, it's, it's a horrible feeling. And so the one thing that I absolutely love about the 30S mill is that it, every time uh, it has worked for me, and I've been using this mill for a couple of years now. 
Uh, once the milling is done, we have a restoration and we need to crystallize or sinter it depending on whether it's Emacs, zirconia, some, some other glass ceramic material, or if it's composite, we can, we can skip this step. Um, and that is generally accomplished um, in some sort of, of oven. Uh, the one that I have is the Ivaclar CS2, but there are others out there. Uh, Vita makes a good one as well. Uh, once we have completed that, um, it's time for delivery. All right. So the workflow and the goal for this workflow, and this is not something if you're new to CAD CAM that you're going to accomplish in your first week or your first month, or maybe even your first six months, but this is the goal that you should be kind of shooting for as you get more proficient with the system. And that is the 105 minute Emacs. Uh, Emacs is mostly what I do. So that's what I'll talk about. Uh, the 105 minute appointment. Okay. And this is absolutely doable. Um, and I've broken it down here at, into kind of little goals uh, that you can, that you can accomplish. But one of the nicest things about this is that you as the dentist don't even have to be around for a large portion of this. Now, different States have different uh, re regulations about things like taking a final impression. And what, I'm not going to get into that. In South Carolina, the dentist has to take the final impression. So I am always there for um, that part. But I'll talk about some ways that you can expedite that, that part as well. Um, but for the most part, the part that are still in color are the only parts that I need to be uh, around for. So once you get really proficient and you, and you can, can predict how long this process will take, um, you can start to schedule other patients into this, uh, you know, into a second column of your schedule to do small fillings, to do emergency exams, to do hygiene checks if you're running several chairs of hygiene. All these things can be mixed in to, to keep yourself busy, right, during, uh, during this 105 minutes or however long it takes uh, for that appointment to be completed. Um, so this is a really nice part of the workflow is that once you get it down, it can be very efficient by mixing in other appointments as well. One thing that I need you need to be familiar with when you're talking about any Plan Mecca technology is that it the hub of all Plan Mecca's technology is a software called Romexis, and Romexis is a um, is a software that allows for basically you to purchase any module that you want. That is, um, you can, if you have a CBCT, you automatically get Romexis and you get 2D and 3D imaging. Okay. When you buy a CAD CAM system, you get Romexis and you get the CAD CAM software, which is called Plan CAD Easy. Uh, if you want to do orthodontics, if you want to do smile design, uh, you can, you can also, um, upgrade by adding these modules. So it's a very, very powerful software. I think it's one of the best things about working in Plan Mecca's ecosphere is how powerful Romexis is. It does so many different things. And I'm not even scratching the surface with this list on the left-hand side. There's practice management portions of it. There are PACS capabilities. Um, it does a ton of different things uh, for your dental practice. And you can scale it depending on whatever you need. So we're going to spend most of our time today talking about the CAD CAM software called Plan CAD Easy uh, and showing you some, some tricks in that. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the advantages of CAD CAM uh, dentistry, basically single visit restorations. And the most obvious one is, is time, right? We're, we're, we're saving our patients that second visit, which they hate. We're saving ourselves that second visit, which quite honestly, and I never liked delivery appointments because anything could happen, right? Uh, the crown could fit perfectly. It could be, we could be done in 15 minutes. The crown could fit horribly. We'd have to re-impress and it would take much, much longer. Um, so really anything could happen in those appointments. And to get rid of that step in my practice has been a huge burden off my back because I really, really disliked, uh, one, having to rely on the lab for, um, for a well-fitting restoration. Now, I, if, if there's any problem in that workflow, I only have myself to look at. So um, that's a really nice thing, but it's a huge time saver. It's a huge practice builder to, to do single, single visit crown and bridge dentistry. And, and, um, I think it's, it's a great way to build a practice. I know it's been a big, big part of how I've started to build my own practice. The other thing is that you can do really conservative dentistry. So, you know, when you are thinking about doing partial coverage, whether that's your thing or not, you have an opportunity to do it very easily without having to worry about provisionalization. Okay. So the ability to easily do conservative dentistry is a big plus. Um, 
we've done some research at the university talking about how well these milled restorations fit. There used to be a kind of a um, this idea that milled restorations, uh, CAD CAM milled restorations, had you know fit terribly, and maybe they did 15 years ago with the older technology. But now the the quality of the mills um, really give you restorations that fit every every bit as good as your your best cast gold restoration ever did. Um, and certainly all of the laboratories now are milling restorations and a lot of them are using the same types of mills. So there's really no reason to question the ability of these mills to produce a, a very well fitting crown. I, I'm a bit of a control freak, so I like having total control over a process. And I'll show you some anterior cases um, a little bit later where that really comes to, to fruition. But um, once again, I, I had some bad experiences as a younger dentist with laboratories, um, and maybe part of that was me for sure. But uh, you know, I would I would get crazy anxiety on delivery day when you know I was going to see the restoration because I just didn't know whether it was going to fit or not, whether the shade was going to be right, whether the contours were going to be correct, especially for anterior teeth. It was it was really stressful for me. So so taking total control of that process. Um, is, is I think, a, a huge benefit. Um, it very much suits my personality. Uh, and last but not least, no temporaries. Man, I make, nowadays I make probably three temporaries a year. Um, you know, I, I will oftentimes temporize uh, long span bridges um, and I do some anterior uh, temporaries as well. I'll talk to you a little bit about my strategy for when I'll do single visit anteriors or when I'll send them off to the lab. But I don't have to deal with patients calling and telling me their tent came off um, it's or broke or whatever. That's just not something that is a, is a part of my practice. So, which I love, uh, it's a really nice advantage as well. So, you know, when, when you talk, um, when you're talking about marketing to your patients about having a CAD CAM system, these are, these are the two big things. Patients don't love temporaries, right? Generally they look, they don't look that great. Um, they're, they're a little bit gritty. They're a little bit rough. Um, and they come off from time to time, right? So no temporaries and no second visit. You only have to take off one day from work, right? You don't need to take that second second um, appointment time off. So it's really, really nice way to market your practice. For me, and I'm gonna talk a lot about my own experiences in CAD CAM, but I love to do minimal tooth preparation. I love to be ultra conservative, by no means is that the only way to do CAD CAM dentistry, okay? If you are someone who's used to doing PFM preps, um, you can get a CAD CAM system and completely do the same type of dentistry uh, just using different materials, right? Maybe Emacs, maybe Zirconia, whatever that material may be. Um, you can still do that type of dentistry with a CAD CAM system um, and still be incredibly successful. I, I'll talk a lot about Emacs because Emacs has been on the market now for almost 15 years and has been heavily researched. And it, the, the, the numbers, both in clinical trials and in um, basically every research project that's been done is outstanding. We're talking 90 to 95 plus percent success rate over 10 to 12 years. Um, those numbers are fantastic. It's as good as anything we've ever had in dentistry. Uh, so, you know, you shouldn't hesitate if you've been using PFM, if you've been using strictly zirconia to make the transition to Emacs, uh, as long as you're, you're preparing the tooth correctly, you will be successful. And we'll talk about that a little bit here in a bit. But I love doing partial coverage. A uh, patient comes in and they have a defect in the tooth. I, ju I just want to treat the defect. I don't want to grind the crown down or the, the tooth down for a crown. Uh, so I try to be as conservative as possible and, and doing CAD CAM really helps us do this. My full coverage crowns are, are basically occlusal overlays. So they look a little bit like this. Um, I, I rely heavily on really good isolation, really great bonding and enamel to keep these re uh, restorations in place. And I've been doing this for 10 years and find it very satisfying. So this is, uh, once again, this is the way that I choose to do dentistry. It's not maybe not for everyone, but um, but I absolutely love it. And CAD CAM dentistry is what makes it possible. I couldn't do this uh, nearly as well if I had to put a temporary on those restorations. And then once again, a predictable material. So I won't go on too much about uh, Emacs lithium disilicate. 
but I will say that it has it really never let me down. Um, sure, I've had I've had failures over the the course of that ten years, but when I really look critically at the cases, it was something that I missed. I missed something with the occlusion. I didn't reduce enough. There was always something that that I missed to cause that. And those failures have made me a better dentist uh, because of of seeing those. So um, Emacs is very, very good product. Hey, Dr. Manito. So, yes. Are you able to move your Zoom control box off the screen a little more? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It disappeared. I think we're good now. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yep. So what do we need to make this happen? Well, we need... We need to know what what technology we're using, okay? And the first step in that, like I like I said earlier, is a fast, accurate intraoral scanner. So let's talk a little bit about the Emerald S. I already talked about the fact that it is lightweight and ergonomic, and that might be a strange thing to start with. But like I said, I have a lot of scanners that I use in my practice. I have an Itera, which is a very good scanner. But that thing is giant. And I have a petite dental assistant who does a lot of my scanning. And it takes her legitimately two hands to wield that thing. Um, so while it's a great scanner, for her to be successful in scanning with it is often very difficult. You know, you can't retract and hold a scanner with two hands at the same time. So it's basically it turns it into kind of a two-person job. The Emerald S is very lightweight. It's very easy to manipulate. So I have one of these in my practice as well. And generally speaking, unless I'm doing Invisalign, we prefer using the Emerald S for basically everything else. So it is a very, very lightweight scanner, very easy to manipulate. And you got to think about that because in most cases, it is the, it is hopefully anyway, the, the staff, your team who is going to be wielding this, um, this scanner. The other thing is obviously the, the picture quality, right? Um, and I have, a, I have a picture here of a crown prep that I did a couple months ago, and I wanted to show you, you know, one of the big things with an intraoral scanner strictly for CAD CAM is that you have to be able to mark your margins. And a lot of times these preps go subgingival. So um, one of the nice features of the Emerald S is it has the ability to take an HD snapshot. What an HD snapshot is, it, you basically hover the camera over your preparation and it takes a high definition, high contrast image that will then be basically stitched over your prep. All right. And that's what you're seeing here. Um, so when, those areas where you have a tooth that's adjacent to gum tissue, it really helps the tooth structure to stand out. Okay. Um, here I have also, because I'm subgingival, I have some cord pack. That's the dark line. Um, that's a good strategy as well. You still have to have great tissue management to take an intraoral scan, just like you would if you were taking a physical impression. None of that is different. Uh, the dentistry is really all the same. You're just able to capture uh, these images much more quickly. It takes me for, for and I'll talk about how, mu how many teeth you need to scan for a CAD CAM case here in a moment, but it takes me about a minute a scan. So a grand total of maybe actually about two and a half minutes because the bite takes only about 15 or 20 seconds. So it doesn't take long at all to create these data files. Uh, and then you're, you're moving on to the next, uh, to the design process. So it really is a fast, effective way to capture data. Um, and here it is just kind of an action shot of me and my assistant getting a scan on one of my colleagues. Um, and I am, I've never been the fastest scanner, y'all. I, I, and I'm not the fastest dentist either. I, I like to take my time. Uh, but you can see here, and this is a little bit hitchy because of the screen capture software that I had to run. Uh, you'll see a better uh, example here in a moment of how, uh, just how quickly this scans. But, and you can see at the lower, on the lower left is a, is a session usage time where it keeps a basically keeps a count of how long you've been scanning. And this is a crown lay prep that I did on that colleague. And I'm just filling in that information. And in about a minute, you have everything you need for that particular um, for that particular case. So that's me. That's someone who's been doing CAD CAM for 10 years. This is one of my students. Uh, and, and this was his first experience with the Emerald S. So I wanted to share this with you as well. You can kind of see uh, I asked him to do a full arch scan while we were waiting for our crown to mill and handed him the scanner and said, go for it, man. And uh, and this is what he was able to do. So uh, first time Emerald S scanner, not a first time scanner. Our students get a lot of uh, experience, mostly on typodonts, unfortunately, 
Um, but a lot of them get to, to scan probably at least, you know, 10 or 15 times with a couple of different scanners over the course of their, um, of their careers. Um, so they have some nice experience and they get to use uh, quite a few scanners. So, but this was, this was his first experience with, uh, the Emerald S and he did a great job. I mean, this is not an easy thing. The one thing that we teach and the one thing I would emphasize for anyone who's new to intraoral scanning is to have a scan path that you use for every single case. So if you're doing a full arch scan, I generally do the occlusals first, um, then the linguals, and then wrap it around and finish with the buckles. And you can see that is what this student is, is doing as well. Um, it's always a little more difficult to scan along the anteriors with any scanner uh, because the lips tend to get in the way a little bit there. Uh, so retraction is a very important step as well. But I don't want to dwell on this, but uh, I will say that as far as pure scanning goes, and the Emerald S is, is a very nice product. So what is important to get in a digital impression? Well, obviously, you need to be able to see your margins, right? That's first and foremost. I talked about the HD snapshot feature. That is really, really great. It also We also uh, are able to ditch our margin, which is kind of a neat thing, especially when you're sending that off to the lab. So if you take an intraoral scan for a bridge, say, and you're going to have the, the, the lab mill you a bridge, um, you can actually mark your own margin, right? Which I think is, is the responsibility of the dentist. If you're able to mark a margin on a tooth that you just prepped, um, why wouldn't you do that, right? Why wouldn't you you make it so much simpler for your lab technician to create those restorations and to make sure that the fit of those is going to be fantastic? So in the software, it allows you to mark those margins and actually ditch the margin. Um, and it sends a STL file, all right, of, of your scan with your prep and the margin is already ditched. There is absolutely no question about where that finish line should be. Um, and it's a slam dunk for your lab when they're making that restoration. So another nice feature, but you have to be able to capture all those uh, all those finish line areas completely. The other thing is you got to get the proximal surfaces of the adjacent teeth. So remember, you're going to build a restoration, and you're going to be able to fine tune the contact points of that restoration, both in the clusal contacts and the proximal surfaces as well. And so if you don't get adequate data on those surfaces, then really you're just guessing as to how much contact you're producing in your restoration. So really important to get great data on both of those proximal surfaces so that when you build that restoration uh, and you fine tune that proximal contact, it'll be perfect each and every time. And then the other thing is you really want to get a span of a minimum of about four teeth. And the reason for that is because when you take your prep scan, you take your opposing scan, and you take your bite, having four teeth just gives the computer enough data to be able to bring all of those scans together and create a nice digital model for you. So having uh, four teeth at a minimum, I think, and this is basically uh, what you see here is basically what I would what I would normally get for this. I might go a little bit further forward to the canine because um, that, that is, a, is a simple area to capture, but this is basically all you need. And then you need a user-friendly design software. So we talked about Romexis and how PlanCAD Easy uh, has a bunch of tools that gives you different ways of doing things. So here I am tweaking the proximal contact a little bit. And I'll talk about these different strengths and the, how the color codes um, work for contact strengths and things like that. Uh, but there are different ways to do this. There's a one-touch solution where all you have to do is push a button and it turns the contact uh, a certain a certain color that you have pre uh, preset into the software. Uh, or you can go in and do like I did and just kind of fine tune exactly uh, like you would with a wax instrument, adding a little wax here, taking away a little wax there. Um, to get the, a certain contact strength. I'm old, so I used to work in wax. Um, some of you who might be younger may have no idea what I'm talking about, um, but hopefully you've had a chance. I, I used to love working in wax. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, this is something called the plan tab. And the plan tab is a way that you can kind of give, give the computer a little assist uh, to making a really great proposal. And it's basically the software gives you almost like a denture tooth for you to position over your tooth preparation. 
Um, and you have some tools like rotate, resize, and move that you can use. You can bring the byte in. And all this does is just helps to guide the software a little bit into giving you a good proposal. And then once you, once you um, create that actual design, then it's when, that's when you can go in and you can really use either global adjustment tools like I'm doing here, where you can increase, uh, you can bump out a surface towards the mesial, you can twist, you can rotate the, the proposal, you can do all sorts of different things with just a click of the button. Um, those are really easy, nice, nice tools to use to start. Uh, and then you go into the more um, selective tools. And I think the tool that I'm using here is called Rubber Tooth. And it is basically, I think, the best tool in CAD CAM design. It is so simple to use. You basically allows you to grab the mesh of that design and just stretch it or shrink it in any given uh, area. So basically, you have to get kind of perpendicular to whatever surface you want to work with. And just using that Rubber Tooth feature, you can adjust it. And then this is the bite tab where we can just circle these areas on our restoration to create whatever bite strength we want. Um, and this is, these are the simple tools that are great for new users uh, to really simplify the, the work process. I've been doing this for a while, so I tend to like to fine tune uh, the cusp to fossa relationship. So I tend to, to do this technique where I can you can basically section your design and you can see the opposing tooth as it fits into that space and really fine tune the cusp to fossa relationship and get a little bit more detailed when it comes to uh, where your occlusion is and the strength of those. And the same thing for the proximal contacts. Now, if we look at these proximal contacts, you can see the color coded uh, area on the right hand side. And that tells us basically uh, what our uh, material thickness is. There is one for proximal contacts and there's one for um, for uh, occlusal contacts as well. So those color codes, as you use the software, you just get to really know what each one means. Uh, and you don't really have to use that um, that that chart to tell you how much material thickness you have, for example. So what are some focus areas for our digital design? Well, we've already talked a little bit about material thickness, but it is top of the list for me. Because when you're working with certain materials and you don't hit those, um, those uh, material thickness parameters, you're probably going to have issues. And so for me, I do mostly bonded Emacs. So I'm shooting for one millimeter for bonded Emacs. Okay. Also, three Y zirconia, which is our Bruxer type, um, you know, kind of real strong zirconia. Uh, you only really need a millimeter of material thickness for those. Everything else basically is, is closer to a millimeter and a half. So Emacs that you're cementing with an RMGI, uh, Empress, which is a really, really pretty material uh, that you can use for anterior restorations and uh, maybe inlays and onlays as well. And some of those weaker zirconias, you want to mill them with a little bit greater, um, greater thickness. The difference between bonded and cemented is that when you bond a glass ceramic or a zirconia, it actually provides support for that material. And basically, you don't need as much thickness because the bonded uh, resin cement is providing support for that structure. Uh, if you're cementing, that cement is basically just filling the cement gap and helping to keep the, the crown or the restoration on the tooth. So those are two very different things. Proximal contact strength. So my, my friend, Wally Renee, always describes your desired proximal contact strength is Hawaii blue, but I've never been to Hawaii, so I call it teal. Um, and, and I'll show you what that looks like here in another slide uh, as we go through a design, but, um, but that's what you're shooting for. Now that may differ slightly depending on the, how your mill mills a restoration. It varies, I mean, very slightly depending on the material you use for one um, and also how you know, new your burrs are in the mill. Uh, if they're worn a little bit, you might get a little bit of variability within this. But generally speaking, it's not much. You can you can almost count every time that if you have a teal proximal contact, you're going to have a good a good result. And then occlusal contacts as well. So for occlusal contacts, you actually want a negative contact. So you want a little bit of space there. And the reason for that is because we're going to inevitably add some glaze uh, to these restorations. For the most part, we're doing Emacs. 
uh, we're going to glaze that restoration. That glaze has a certain thickness. And so we have to account for that in our design. So here's a case. Uh, finally, we get to look at some teeth. Uh, this is one that I did just last week, actually, where the patient came in and was having some biting pain. And if we look a little more closely, you can see there are some fracture lines in these teeth. This amalgam had been in there probably as long as I've been on this earth. And it was time to time to go. So the first step is always to take out the amalgam and see what we've got. And so what I found was a little bit of a fracture underneath uh, that disto buckle cusp. And so I decided to do an onlay. Uh, here's the preparation that I came up with. Um, scanned it, okay? Came out with the design. Uh, designing for partial coverage is very easy. Uh, it's the same, exact same workflow that you would use for a full coverage crown. Um, very, very straightforward. These were the contacts that I got. You can see these are kind of a pur purple and white. So if you look at the chart on the right-hand side, that purple is negative 50 microns. Okay, and the reason for that is because this is going to be milled out of Emacs, and I'm going to use spray glaze, okay? Um, and so that negative 50 microns will become a nice uh, contact once it is stained and glazed. Okay, here are my proximal contacts. This is, I guess, what Hawaii blue is. It looks like teal to me, um, but that is what you're shooting for on the proximal contacts. This is somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 microns. Okay, this surface also gets glazed, but strangely enough, you never, never really have any issues with that glaze really holding up uh, your proximal contacts. So um, good things to know. And then this was the onlay as after it was bonded in place. Um, for this, I once again, I bond all my Emacs, I air braid the tooth, I selective acid etch the enamel, I use a product called Adhes Universal as my bonding agent and a cement called Varilink Aesthetic. And this was the result we got. So the patient was quite happy. The one thing about doing conservative dentistry that I love is that, and I always call my patients the day after we do stuff like this. Uh, it's what I'll do as soon as I get off of this webinar, I'll call it, uh, yesterday's patients. Um, but I will give them a call and inevitably they have no post-op issues, okay? No post-op issues. And I don't think it's because I'm that good of a dentist. I think it's because just simply because in the process of doing these restorations, I'm just not taking away a lot of healthy tooth structure. And I think obviously the tooth tends to respond a little more favorably to that. Anyway, um, here's another case where we have a really old, good grief, this amalgam. Should have been taken out a long time ago. And you can see once we get the restoration out, you can see those fracture lines in the teeth. The other thing you can see a little bit of is we've got these areas of wear along these. So this patient was clearly a Bruxer. We've got another um, fracture line kind of between this isthmus. So in the end, I decided to do uh, a crown lay. And even then, you can see we still have some fracture lines that are showing up in this tooth. But decided to do a crown lay prep basically an occlusal overlay, um, put it into the software. I was able to actually scan the prep under rubber dam. This is something that a lot of people do. I don't, I don't love to do this. It's not my routine, but, um, but you can absolutely scan with a rubber dam on. It's just a certain protocol that you need to follow, um, which I won't get into today. We can talk about that at another time. Um, mark the margin, come up with our design. You can see how much great detail is in that design. Now, some of that great detail will be carried over to the um, to the restoration. Some of it will not. And you'll see here, um, this is this is milled, and this is milled on standard mode. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but you can see I still have the sprue on here, so I haven't done anything to this. This is what it looks like straight out of the mill. Uh, I will refine it ever so slightly. There are sometimes if I have enough material thickness where I will add a little bit of uh, what I call sexiness to it, some anatomy to these restorations. But for the most part, I'll just take what, what the mill gives me, uh, add a little bit of characterization to it. Uh, I like, you know, I, I am a fan of giving my patients something that is every bit as nice as what they would, what I would get back from the laboratory. It's not nicer. And so I, I take, tend to take the five minutes to stain and glaze my restorations, um, to try to help them, help them blend in to the teeth. And that was a, a really, really rewarding case. That was one that turned out really nicely. Uh, I want to talk about anterior. So when you first get a CAD CAM system, uh, you absolutely should not start doing anteriors right away. They are, it is much more difficult simply from a standpoint of figuring out the, the materials, 
Okay. And, and once again, I use mostly Emacs, figuring out what Emacs looks like compared to natural tooth structure, compared to zirconia crowns, compared to composite restorations. There's things that there's a bit of a learning curve there as far as trying to figure out how best to make Emacs match natural uh, dentition and things like that. So I want to talk about a case where we had to had to um, basically navigate those waters a little bit. This is one I did with one of my students, uh, Shelby. Shelby has now gone on to become a uh, private practice dentist. She's been out for about a year now. Um, and this was the patient. Chief complaint had crowns across the front, but one tooth that still hadn't been worked on and it kind of stood out. So obviously, you know, one of these things is not like the other. Number eight uh, needed a little bit of love and the patient was ready to have that done. One of the tricky bits for us is that we had a myriad of different materials to try to match. Um, zirconia, PFM, uh, we had an Emacs uh, over there on number 11. So, you know, it makes it really difficult when you have a, a rainbow of, of different materials um, because they all have different optical properties. But obviously, if we're doing a central incisor, we're trying to match the other centrals. So our plan here is to use, try to use Emacs. Uh, even though this is a zirconia crown, I felt pretty good that I could match this with it with a low translucency Emacs. So Emacs comes in high translucency, medium translucency, and uh, low translucency. And in this case, the low translucency tends to be very close to uh, um, the ability to match a zirconia crown. So we picked our shade, uh, we picked our translucency, and now it's time to nail the shape. And this is something that in my first couple of years of practice, both on the CEREC system and on the PlanMeca system was very, very difficult to do. And to be honest, I've never quite figured it out on the CEREC system. However, I will, as I'll show you here, there is a software tool in place with PlanMeca's um, software that allows you to do this actually quite easily. Um, and so I say, don't, don't do anteriors right off the bat, but if you do choose to do that, um, you actually can be very successful if you can get that shade to match. And it's called the contralateral tool. And I'll show you that here in a moment. So this was Shelby's very first crown prep uh, ever on a real tooth. Um, and she did a pretty good job. Uh, here is the design steps using that contralateral tool. And we don't scan until after we've prepped the tooth. And the reason for that is because Basically, we are telling the computer we want to use that contralateral central incisor as the basis for our design and wait, holding off to scan until after we prep, meaning we can scan that whole mesial surface of that tooth and get all that data to be able to get a really precise match right there at the midline. And so here we are marking a, a separate margin around the tooth we want to mimic. It gives us that shape mirrored. All right, that we can use in the plan tab. And, and basically, just like in a normal plan tab, we're going to be able to manipulate this little venture tooth. All right. And look at how look at how precise it is, uh, a mirror image of that other of that other central incisor. So we just put it where it fits. Okay. We ask the the computer to uh, basically marry that to our prep. And then all it takes is a little bit of fine tuning. All right. You always, it's never. It's never perfect. It's never perfect. It always takes a little bit of work on our end to make that uh, ideal. We obviously have to still think about things like material thickness. We have to think about our contacts. I always add a little, just a little bit of anatomy and some of those line angles. Um, but all of these things are just the same as when you do them uh, with posterior teeth. Uh, and the fact that the design is already like 90% of the way done really simplifies doing these anterior cases. Once that design is done, this is the 30S mill. I'll talk about this a little bit later. It's a single spindle mill, and it will mill out a crown in anywhere from eight to 15 minutes, right? Premolars for the last, I've done a bunch of premolars in the last few uh, months. They've all been right about eight minutes. It takes a little bit longer for a molar and a little bit longer for anteriors because of the length of anteriors. Um, maybe 12 to 13 minutes, um, but that's really good. Eight to 13 minutes is right in the wheelhouse uh, of what you can expect for a, a milled Emacs restoration. Uh, then once we get it out, some people like to try them in, some people like to take them straight to the, to the oven, regardless of what you decide to do. Um, 
like I said, I like to put a little stain and glaze on these to help them match. This is actually the beginning of my staining and glazing for this particular case. The oven cycle on the CS2 for Emacs, there is a spray glaze cycle that is about 14 and a half minutes. Um, so it's very, very quick. Um, and then hopefully you get some really great results. Now, I don't do every single anterior case uh, that comes into my office. Uh, even at this point, I will sometimes, and I'd say I still do maybe 85 to 90% of single, single unit anteriors in, in my office. Uh, multiple unit anteriors, I still do some uh, of those as well. You just have to get an, uh, an idea for one, your comfort level with doing those cases, right? I've been doing this for a long time. I'm pretty comfortable doing anteriors, but there's still some patients who come in and, and I look at and I'm like, yeah, I think you, we'd be better off utilizing a lab or I just don't have the, the time, right, to, to devote to that. So I really like to, to do these cases when I can. Uh, I think you'll, you'll agree that this turned out pretty well, even even looking at it through, you know, zoomed in photo. Um, that's another thing that I that I rely on heavily, heavily is digital photography uh, for these, um, because, you know, in order to see the details of a stained uh, restoration, you really need to have a good high quality digital photo to be able to zoom in and to see where the translucency is, to see where the additional chroma is and all that stuff. It's kind of hard to see uh, with the naked eye. At least I kind of find it hard to see. And oh, oh, by the way, this took us three hours with a dental student to do this case. So really, really efficient way of doing dentistry. Um, this was this was really a lot of fun. Uh, here's another anterior that uh, another example of how just how well that um, that contralateral tool in PlanCAD Easy works. This is one that came in with a pre-op condition. It's amazing the stories that people tell you. She had she lived in New York. She was from LA. She had flown across country three times to get this veneer made, number eight. Okay, and this was this had been on there for like four or five years. And she, she didn't really like it at all. I thought they did a really nice job with the shade. I thought they did a really nice job with the shape, but there's no texture, right? So it doesn't, it's a mismatch too, because they didn't, they didn't hit the texture. And of course, the reason she came to see me is because she had chipped a part of that gingival margin. So once again, using that contralateral tool after the prep was done, right? Taking that old veneer off, we're able to come up with a really good symmetrical design. And then, right, looking looking pretty good there. Uh, and then was able to mimic the shade and the texture pretty pretty well. As I look at this case, I always think there's a, eh, maybe a couple small things that I would have changed. But to be honest, when you looked at her at a conversational distance, it it was perfect. It was nailed. Um, but I always like to take these uh, digital photos to be able to really pinpoint uh, the things that I can do to get better. So. Um, this was a case that I, I really enjoyed. Um, I did that one in, in actually in, in two visits. Uh, in all honesty, I didn't do that one in a single visit because I really wanted to get the texture right. And texture is something that takes a little bit of work and a little bit of practice to be able to nail. Um, now, I think I could probably do that one in a single visit, but um, also the patient had very high aesthetic demands. Obviously, she's flying across country to get a tooth fixed. So I wanted to make sure that we could give her a great result. Uh, here's another different, little slightly different way to use your your CAD CAM system, and this is um, this is for planning for bigger cases. So I, I like to do a lot of my bigger cases with with lab technicians. I have some really great lab techs that I work with in my practice, and so I like to let them do their thing. They're super talented. Uh, a lot of my patients have really high aesthetic demands for for veneer cases, and so but I like to do the wax up. I want to, I want to do the first step. And this is an example of one that we did at the university actually, uh, where this was the pre-op condition where the patient, her chief complaint was number eight. She didn't like that 30 year old feldspathic crown. Uh, and number seven was a little banged up, but for the most part, we had some, we had some small interproximal lesions on nine and 10, but those were in really good shape. So what I did is I scanned the patient, put her into plan CAD easy, and just did a completely additive wax up on this patient. Okay, and because of how that crown on number eight was a little bit bulky, so you can kind of see that showing through a little bit there. But for the most part, this is a completely additive wax up, okay, that I can then take, I can 
3D print, create a model, and I can then create a putty off of that to do whatever I want with. I can do a mock-up in the patient's mouth to show them what this like case might look like. We can test drive shades. In this case, that was one thing that we weren't quite sure of. How bright did we want to go? Do we want to try to match the existing dentition? Was the patient interested in whitening? With this wax up and this putty, it allows you to, to really, I don't want to say sell the case because I think the patient was interested enough from, from the get-go, but it helps you to really give the patient an idea, an emotional uh, idea of what this could turn out like. And it really gets them excited when they can see it in their mouth. It's one thing to show them photos on the screen, or if you do a smile design and, and you know, some softwares have the ability to do mock-ups on a 2D photo uh, so that, you know, basically it's the patient's smile with kind of cartoony looking teeth on them. This is a way when the patient can look at that, those restorations, the shape, the shade, in their mouth, and it can be done very quickly once you get proficient with the software. So in this case, um, the student uh, did some really nice conservative veneer preps. We had to get the decay out in the interproximal, uh, so we had to be a little more aggressive there. Uh, took off that old feldspathic crown, and then based off that wax up that I did, we're able to create some really nice uh, bisacral um, provisionals. I say I don't do provisionals. I do a decent number of veneer provisionals uh, and I use the shrink wrap technique. So I really don't have too many issues with those. But this is a way that you can you can kind of want it. It keeps you designing and it gets you more proficient uh, with anteriors, which is a, is a big step in a very low pressure setting. Um, you know, um, making these provisionals, you have basically carte blanche. You can adjust anything that you want uh, if you're you're not happy with with the way your design turned out. In this case, the patient absolutely loved the design, and we ended up scanning that um, and sending that to the lab and having them use that for the basis of the final restoration. So, just another way that you can use that for um, yeah for for helping helping to grow your practice. Right, patients they they love. They love that that you offer these services and it shows that you're passionate about what you do and that you're taking a, a hands-on approach to, to their care. And I'm going to finish by talking a little bit about the milling unit. This is the 30S mill uh, pinky and it mills a very, very nice crown. The one thing that I really like about it, even though it's single spindle, so what that means is that it cuts with one burr at a time. Uh, most, most of the chair side mills that have been around in the past, uh, the old Serac mills, even the old Plamecca mills had two burrs that cut simultaneously on either side. Uh, and I don't I don't know that there are any advantages or disadvantages to, to having two burrs or one burr, but I will say that I am shocked that this mill with a single single spindle can mill a crown in, in eight minutes. And when you take it out and you look at the intaglio surface, like I'm showing here, the, the finish of that intaglio surface is very, very impressive. Now, part of that has to do with the preparation, um, but the mill is able to replicate that very well. Um, this is just seeing it in action. The, the interface is very intuitive. There are step-by-step um, -step, uh, instructions when you have to say, change the water. It walks you through that process for, for each time you do it. Even if you know exactly how to do it, it will walk you through those steps. It'll walk you through the cleaning processes. It's a very, very nice interface. And everything is kind of right there. So it shows you what your water pressure is. It shows you how much water you have in the tank. It shows you all those things uh, right off the bat. Um, and it mills really quickly. You know, I, I like I said, I, I don't mean to harp on it, but man, eight minutes for a premolar is is fast for Emacs. Uh, I'm not sure there's any other mill that mills Emacs with that kind of speed. Um, and so it's really, really nice mill. And it gives you some options as far as what kind of detail uh, you want. So I do a lot of, right, if, I, if I'm milling a veneer, for instance, or if I'm milling a really thin occlusal veneer, um, sometimes I'll mill in what's called detailed mode. And detailed mode means that it just uses a, a burr with a little bit of a finer tip. If you can look at the difference between the burr used in standard and the burr used in detailed, um, the detail just is able to, to give you better definition, right? So if you have a preparation like a veneer prep where you're milling really thin, 
detail mode is the ways to go. Now, detail mode does take a little bit longer. I would say if if a if a premolar took eight minutes in standard mode, it would take about 12 or 13 in detail mode. So it does add a few minutes to the process. But if you're doing really conservative dentistry, if you're milling your own veneers, totally worth it. Totally worth it to go to detail mode to get that really nice uh, fit and finish. And it's very easy to select. So when you select uh, or you tell the system that you want to mill, it will one pull up a list of all the mills in your system. So these are some of the mills we have at the university. Um, it will also offer you whether you want to mill in standard or detail. Um, so it makes it really easy for you to pick and you can, you can uh, just pick it on the fly. So it's really nice. And then, like I said, the, the fit you're able and the finish you're able to get with this are fantastic. My buddy Wally Renee is a big Star Wars guy. He milled this little Yoda out of Emacs in detailed mode. And you can see that is impressive, uh, especially when you see just how small that thing is. So uh, this mill can really produce some nice restorations for you. Uh, this was a case, and I showed you earlier, where I was scanning my colleague. And he he basically came to me and he said, he said, Tony, I know you like to do conservative dentistry, but I want you to go even more conservative than you're used to going. Like I want you to, to go a half a millimeter uh, reduction on this for me. And I was like, all right, man, this, you know, if something happens, obviously he's, he was a part of that, of that decision-making process. So this was the final design. Um, basically the red is like most red would be in any, anything that, that you uh, have. Red is usually very, very thin. So you see, we have some red areas. Uh, the green is about a millimeter and the blue is a millimeter and a half. So you can see we're quite thin in certain areas. And you can see how the mill was able to really produce that, um, that, that definition and that thickness very well. There, we are at about 0.5 millimeters where it is red on that design. Um, and then once it's milled, it's just a matter of doing some staining and glazing. And I teach courses on this. Iva Clark gives courses on this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who teach staining and glazing. Um, I, I really like it. It speaks to my creative nature. And so, um, I, I love to do a little, a little arts and crafts, as I say. And I usually, it usually only takes me maybe two or three minutes to do this. I've gotten a really good, um, really good process going. And I do like the spray glaze. It's nice and quick and easy. This is what that particular one looked like, uh, when it came uh, or right before it went into the oven. And this is what it looked like when it came out. Um, and then it's time for delivery. So, you know, depending on whether you want to use uh, a resin modified glass on or cement, um, or if you want to bond with composite, whatever you want to do, you just got to make sure you know what your final delivery process is going to be as you're prepping the tooth. So you can make sure you're prepping adequately for whatever material you are using. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna give you a little a little one uh, question poll, and you've learned a lot today. We we've, we've covered the scanner, we've covered the design software, we've covered the mill, we've covered Romexis, which is kind of the heart of everything in the Planmeca's ecosphere. Um, so basically, are you interested in learning more? Um, like I said, I, I use the Planmeca Fit system. Uh, it is. And I use Sarah. I use both today. To this very day, I uh, I milled two mills. Our two cases with Plan Mecha Fit system. We did one with a um, with a Prime Scan and an MCXL. And so I've used them both today. And they are they are both great systems. There is one thing that that they that separates them. And that is that is cost. All right. And I'm not going to talk about money too much because I. You know, we'll let the, the people at Shine, I don't even know what the, what the exact cost is. It's kind of a moving target, um, depending on the deals that are in any given moment. But I mean, it's a pretty considerable difference in cost between those two systems. Um, and honestly, it's a great system. I, it's, uh, you know, it's a no, it was a no brainer for me when we went into practice. So, um, so yeah, are you interested in learning more? Uh, if so, reach out to your, to your Shine rep. Uh, they'll be happy to to give you a little more information. I am um, I am on Instagram. You can find me at Smile Professor. Uh, you can DM me with any questions. You can shoot me an email. Though I will say my email has been getting a little bit backed up lately. Um, 
So as 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 happens from time to time, um, just one beautiful shot of uh, Charleston here to send you on with your evening. But I'm happy to take any questions, and I think Adam's going to help us out with that uh, right now. Awesome, thank you. Great presentation. Uh, we've got a f got a few minutes left. We only got one question in the queue so far, so we'll go ahead and answer that one. Um, it's either why or what do you like to try in your restorations prior to sintering in the oven? Okay, so I like to try them in just to verify that one, the fit. I and I, I will say that if I did a hundred restorations and I tried in a hundred, the fit is good ninety nine times, maybe even maybe even ninety nine point five times. Okay, if that makes sense. Almost never do you have something that doesn't fit. If you're getting a good scan, okay, and if you're able to really read those margins, and those are the right. You ha you have to you have to make sure that everything that is you're using to create uh, that restoration is of of a certain quality. The biggest thing I like to verify is the occlusion, okay. For whatever reason, patients when you're doing the buckle bite sometimes don't occlude all the way, or maybe they don't occlude the way that they normally would okay so i like to make small adjustments to the occlusion uh while the emax in my case is in the is in the blue state um the reason i like to do that is because once i stain and glaze it i don't want to touch it i want that thing to be smooth and beautiful when i cement it in so that when i look at it at recall visits i can marvel at it and say wow that's a really nice looking crap all right, so I want to do those adjustments before I stain and glaze, and that's the reason that I like to like to do it that way. Does the milling machine change burrs automatically? It does. Does you'll hear it. I can. I have mine in the oper one of the operatories at the end of the hall, and I can hear it milling, and I know exactly when it hits the mid midpoint because it'll swap out one burr, it'll pick up another, and it'll continue that process. So even with a burr swap, it only takes eight minutes. It's pretty pretty cool. And then can you get uh, can you get an STL file from the scan? Oh, I didn't even mention this. Plan Mecca is a completely open system, completely open. You can move files out. You can move files in. That means if you have one of the nice, really nice things about this system is if you have a implant case, for instance, I mill my own implant crowns out of Emacs and I have the lab design a custom abutment, they design an Emacs crown for me. They send that STL file back to me. I import it into Romexis and I can mill that crown myself. Huge cost savings, huge ROI compared to sending all that off to the lab. So the, the easy answer to your question is you can do whatever the heck you want with your scans. You have access to the STLs. You can move them out. You can move them in. It's a totally open system, which is awesome. For me, who's a who's a nerd and loves to try things with my with my STL files. So yes, great question. Thank you. And then, in your opinion, how does I believe you showed the thirty S mill? How does the thirty S compare to the forty? So Planmec has had three mills. Okay, they've had the forty, which was the first one. That was a, a old workhorse two uh, two spin away. And I have we have all these currently at the university, so I, I still use these. Uh, quite often, the forty is a good work was a good workhorse mill. Um, we still it still works for us, still works great. You can't doesn't have support anymore, so they're not making the parts. Um, it is a little the forty is a little bit slower than the thirty s. Thirty s is actually faster, even though it's only got a single spindle. Okay, so if, if something takes me ten minutes on the thirty s. That's probably a 12 to 13 minute mill on the 40. The 40S was a forgettable mill, quite honestly, for Plan Mecca. They had, they had problems with it. It was a new design for them. It never really, a lot of them didn't really work well. It's very similar, it's very similar to what uh, Serona is experiencing now with the Prime mill. Um, it's just a for, forgettable mill. The 30S has been awesome. It's been completely reliable, works every time, it's fast. Um, it's a great mill. I so what you so the answer to your question, it's faster than the 40. Um, we've had our 40s for almost a decade now. Will my 30s hold up that long? I hope so. Uh, I have no reason to believe that it won't. 
Great. I think we are going to end right on the one hour mark. So thank you, Dr. Menino, for the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, of course, to Plan Mecca for sponsoring today's webinar. If anyone has additional questions about CAD CAM, or if you'd like to learn more about how to, how to add the Plan Mecca Fit system into your practice, please email us at webinars at henryshine.com and we'll connect you with a local representative in your area. Additionally, if anyone is interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. As a thank you for attending today, everyone will receive the recording of this webinar via email sometime in the next week. I would like to thank you all for joining and we hope to see you back here on future webinars. Have a great night. Thanks guys. Thank you.